seconds of round one, Kelsey Banks and Arnaldo Mesa of Cuba, the first confrontation between the two favored teams in boxing, Cuba and the U.S. Banks jabbed effectively right to the final 20 seconds of the round, and Gil and I uh, thought at that point he was leading in the scoring very comfortably. However, suddenly this happened. As we go back on videotape, you'll see a short, sharp punch from the Cuban right there is a left hand Arnaldo Mesa and down goes Banks. Now, yep. I, I don't think Gil that, that Banks has fully really recovered from that knockdown even as we see him in his corner now. All right, Tim, but you have to remember he was knocked down, but he won the entire round before and after the knockdown. So according to amateur rules, he should be way ahead. Now, he may not have completely recovered, but if he is completely recovered, I think he's going to be able to outbox Mesa. Well, that's a good point to make. Remember that in amateur boxing, that knockdown punch counts no more than any other punch. Literally a third of a point. The way they score, three punches counts a point. So Banks, if he has recovered from the effect of that short, sharp shot from Mesa, then Banks, as we saw it, won the first round comfortably. We're in round number two. They met once before. Banks won a decision over Mesa in their previous meeting. And Tim, we have Southpaw against Southpaw. That upright style, many of the Cubans favor. European, Soviet style, whatever you want to call it. Looks a little bit different, but it's very effective for Mesa. Tim, I just don't think that uh, Banks should try to punch with Mesa. He should do what he was doing the entire first round. Just box. He can outpoint them. His hands are fast. He has the height, and he has an accurate right jab. That's what he should be using. In his first outing, Banks defeated Marcos Cristofalo of Argentina. He was not at his best. He won the fight easily because he was simply the more skilled boxer, but he looks a lot better here today than he did against Cristofalo. And Mesa was just looking to nail him with that big left hand, and there he threw it again. Now Banks pouring it on to Mesa. He's getting over anxious, though, Tim. He's reaching in. You can always nail those tall guys when they reach. Referee is Alfredo La Madrid from Colombia. Five judges do the scoring. 20 points for the winner of the round. His box, and now he has his hands up, throwing those combinations. But Cuban has a heavy left hand, Tim. Looks to load up on it. But that's not the way to win in the amateurs. Now Banks is scoring points. But he shouldn't run in, Tim. Take his time. Pick this guy apart. Well, there's a little pride at work, I think. Uh, perhaps embarrassment at the knockdown suffered by Banks at the end of round one. Kelsey Banks from Chicago, Illinois, the 1986 world champion. Doing a job on a Cuban now, Tim. Under a minute to go in the second round. 20-year-old Arnaldo Mesa from Holguin, Cuba. A bronze in the world championships in the Bantamweight division a year ago. Banks made some recovery, Tim. That's that conditioning. Well, the left landed by Mesa there. Good left hand by Banks. And Banks one. Is right back, and he scores with two in a row. Final seconds of the second round. And Mesa looks like he's a little tired, Tim. Final round, Kelsey Banks and Arnaldo Mesa. Featherweight. The world champion Banks, as we see it, won the first two rounds, despite that one solid shot that knocked him down at the end of round one. Good stiff right jab by, by Banks, Tim. He's busy. He just shouldn't get over anxious and reach. Can't walk into that left hand. This is a quarter-final round in the featherweight division. Mesa has some Hawking style, Tim. That's the Russian style. He shot to their amateur boxes. Mesa's favorite American boxer is Mark Freeland, a former great amateur, of course, now on the pros. And Banks is boxing something. He's dropping that right hand, Tim. Very loose. 
Look at Mesa with his hands down. Both hands at his sides. He looks to turn over that left hand, Tim. That's not the win way to win an amateur fight. You have to score points, and Banks has been scoring the points. Mesa defeated a tough customer, Omar Qatari, in his first round of Venezuelan, but he has not looked nearly as good so far here against Banks. Banks is a little quicker, a little better form, in and out. And he has Mesa backing up and running around the ring. I don't know why he can't think he's winning the fight. What do you think the story is, Then Why is I he fighting know. like that? I can't, I can't believe that his He must coach. know he's not ahead. He's getting right. That's what I think is happening. That may him. be. I can't believe his coach uh, wants this performance from Mesa acting as though he's ahead in this bout. Not after what happened to him in the second round. It's only been one big punch by Mesa in the entire fight. Maybe he thinks he's going to come up with one more and finish it. That's unlikely in our view. Approaching the minute to go mark in the bow. Look at those jabs by Banks. Beautiful punches. He's pushed down there by Mesa. Low down by Mesa. No knockdown. Mesa now looking up at the clock. It shows 103 to go. His coach is screaming at him. Alcides Cigara, the head coach of the Cuban team, trying to get him out there to be more active. He's trying to throw that big left hand, Tim. Look at him winging it, but he's not hitting him. Beautiful combination by Banks. Banks staying closer now, smothering Mesa. He's that big left hand. He's just chopping, like chopping wood. Mesa, that's all he has, that left hand. Now he's running away again. is in complete control of this fight now, Tim. That's the end of the bout. That's, that's the end of the bout. Kelsey Banks standing ovation from the partisan crowd here at Indianapolis. So Kelsey Banks will await the decision here at the boxing venue of his match against Arnaldo Mesa. Let's go to Brent. We'll come back for the decision. That's a marvelous fight, the best one so far. And uh, let me update that basketball score quickly. The United States having no trouble at all, leading Uruguay 87 to 64. Now, meanwhile, I had two very interesting spectators watching the action. The closest to me is Michael Bent. He is our heavyweight. And next to him, Riddick Bowe, our super heavyweight. Neither of them have been out to box yet. And Michael, let me start with you. Who won this fight that we were watching here? I thought Kelsey Banks did more than enough to win the fight. Even though he was knocked down Even in the first round? Dropped. Riddick, how about you? Do you agree with that? Well, the knockdown was only scored as one point, so I think I agree with Michael. Riddick, let me ask you, you fight a Cuban uh, this week. Have you fought a Cuban before? Do you know anything about your upcoming opponent? Well, I've seen him several times, but um, no problem. No problem? No problem. <laughs> Michael, how about you? Felix Savon, the world champion. I know oh, he's well, one of the great amateur fighters in the world. You he draw is, him right is. away? I, yes, I do. Let me ask you why you had to wait so long before your first bout. I'm, I'm kind of confused about it that. It all depends upon how many guys in your weight class. In a smaller weight class, they have like 12, 13 guys per bracket. We have four or five per bracket, so we get to fight at least amount of times, about two or three times. Michael, didn't your father make some headlines up in, up in the New York area? He made a little bit of headlines, yeah. Yeah, how did he do that? Tell everybody that stuff. He won the New York State Lottery. He won the New York State right. Lottery. What year was that? That was last year, 86, January of 86. And uh, what did he do with his million-dollar payoff? Um, he's just having a good time. I mean, he's still working for New York State Transit Authority. He's just having a good time with it. That's Enjoying great. Enjoying life. I hope he's here watching you fight. I'm, I hope he is, too. All right. And uh, Riddick, what do you do when you're not a member of our boxing team? Well, basically, going home, I just train, go to college. Where do you go to school? Kingsborough Community College. Would you like to eventually become a professional fighter? Maybe someday. All right. Well, let's go back and find out about the decision. You really never know about international competition, as both of these fine young boxers realize. But let's go back to Tim and Gil. Tim? 
All right, Brent, we're awaiting the decision here for Kelsey Banks and Arnaldo Mesa. The first meeting between a Cuban and an American, the two favored teams for all of the gold medals in the boxing at the Pan American Games. And they're uh, sometimes a little slow getting the decisions around. There are five judges, remember, and uh, Gil, uh, of course, you, even though it takes a little while to get a decision in amateur boxing, uh, you do get a little concerned when it takes longer than a couple of minutes, being as there are five judges involved. Well, Tim, the way we've been educated, there shouldn't be any doubt about the decision. Mesa won five seconds of one round. Banks won the rest of the fight. Okay, well, they have it ready now. Here's the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 57-kilogram, 125-pound weight category, we have a 3-2 to two decision. Señoras y señores, en la categoría de peso de 57-kilogramos, 125 libras, tenemos una decisión de 3 a 2. And the winner, in the red corner from the United States of America, Kelsey Banks. Well, it is Kelsey Banks on a 3 to 2 decision, meaning three judges voted for Banks, two voted for the Cuban Mesa. But Banks advances to the semifinals to meet Esteban Flores of Puerto Rico in this featherweight division. We'll be back with Todd Foster from Great Falls against George Kelman of Antigua. 